Hey everyone, it's Nicole here today for Hero Arts with a card featuring an acetate layer spotlight scene card. Today I'm going to use a piece of acetate to create this window scene that you could create into a shaker if you want to, or you could do what I did and just create that dimensional layer that helps set apart the forefront of the scene from the background. We're going to start with a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of smooth white cardstock. On my glass matte work surface, I am putting out some blue glimmer metallic ink and also some of the pewter glimmer metallic ink. These are both from Hero Arts. I'm adding a little water to these to water them down so that they spread and blend a little bit better. I want to keep the color in the top about three quarters of my panel and leave the bottom white to naturally account for the snow across the bottom of my scene without having to add an extra layer of paper. I'm going to add a little bit more ink to places where it might need it. And then I'm just going to simply add more water, blend my colors until I get that seamless blend I'm looking for. Along the bottom edge, I want to kind of clean up that edge, so I'm going to turn my larger paintbrush to the side to give it a little bit of a nicer line. I definitely don't want it to be perfect because I think that imperfect line really works well with the look of the snow. In addition to my blue and pewter glimmer metallic inks, I like to pull in a little bit of the black liquid watercolor ink from Hero Arts. I think this helps deepen and darken some of the sky and gives it a whole new layer. What I love about this is that the background is going to have this beautiful metallic look to it when it's all dry. I like to let mine set and completely air dry before I move on to the next step. While I'm letting the background air dry, I'm going to stamp the images I'm using for my scene on some smooth white cardstock. I'm going to finish cleaning up that edge, do a little bit more blending, and then set this aside. You can see that sheen when I turn the paper at an angle. For my background scene, I am using images from the Hero Arts Bundle Up stamp set. We'll be using the girl, squirrel, tree stump, and house from this stamp set for our card, as well as the acorn. From the Home for the Holidays stamp set, we're going to be using two of the homes from this and then a tree image. We'll also be using a snowflake from this for the acetate layer, and we'll sh I'll show you that here in a little bit. I'm using the Hero Arts Intense Black ink to stamp my images on smooth white cardstock. This is going to give me a great stamped outline that I can then color in with Copic markers. The Intense Black ink is Copic marker friendly. I've shown the marker colors I'm using in the upper right corner of the screen while I'm coloring in my images. I've left all the coloring in but have sped up the video to save some time today. The log cabins are all colored with shades of earth tones in E53, 55, and 57. The tree is colored in with G82, 94, and 99. I stuck to pretty traditional holiday colors for my girl's outfit and any accents that I'm adding to the buildings, like the shutters, so that this card works for holiday. I want it to appear that the lights are on in all of the homes, so I'm adding some yellow to the windows in all of the houses. I'm using mainly Y11 and Y17. I did pull in a little Y08 in a couple of spots, but I used it pretty minimal. Mostly the very light Y11 and then the Y17 for darkening up that look. One of the roofs of the log cabins is pretty prominent and I chose to go red with this to pull in a little bit more color into my buildings. They're mo mostly going to be in earth tones with little pops of color with the shutters and then of course the lights on in the window. All three buildings will be colored the same. The smoke coming out of the chimney of the one house is going to have some warm gray tint to it 
with warm gray 0, 0, 1, and 3. I like to lay down my dark color first, go around some of the edges with my dark color, and then blend out with my mid-tone and go back and blend even further with my lightest marker again. This is E53, 55, and 57. I use this color combination throughout the design, not only for the buildings, but for the hair on the girl and the stack of firewood that she's carrying in her arms and the tree stump. In the bundle up stamp set, in addition to the girl, if you would rather have your scene face more the other direction, she's facing towards the left. If you would like to use the little boy, he's facing to the right. You could use both as well, but I didn't want to cover up all of the little houses in the background of my card, so I opted to only use one of the large images for the front. And then we're going to accessorize or finish off that forefront layer with the tree, tree trunk, squirrel, and acorns, which aren't going to cover up the buildings in the background. Once the buildings are colored in, I'm going to start on the girl and her outfit. I've also done a little blue along the bottom edge of the buildings with BG0000 and BG01 to add that hint of snow. The snow on the roof of the one house as well. The majority of the girl's outfit here is going to be red and that's providing that nice pop of color to kind of offset all of the neutrals in the background of our card. So her coat's going to be red and her hat and socks and gloves are all going to be a combination of a blue color combination, green color combination, and then red. The reds are R37, 39, and 89. The greens again are G82, 94, and 99, the same colors I used for the trees. And the blues are B34, 37, and 39. All of these color combinations are more along the deeper, richer jewel tones rather than bright primary. I love these for holiday colors. These images in the bundle up stamp set are really super fun too. You could also pull in the cardinal from this and there's a stack of firewood. Both of these would work along the bottom edge of the card and still not cover up the cute buildings in the background. Adding multiple colors to her outfit also add a lot of interest. Her outfit definitely was the highlight of coloring for this particular card. I loved adding all of the different colors. We're going to feather in that hair that is peeking out around the around her face and we're using those same colors that we used for the buildings as I mentioned early, earlier, E53, 55, and 57. It's just a small little bit of her hair here and so I opted not to pull in extra colors since I'm already using quite a few markers for this project. We're going to just finish in coloring around her neck, the cap that ties around her, her chin. And then the pom-pom at the top I went with red and then just kind of pounced in a little bit darker red color and we'll add even more detail with a white pin here in a little bit. So let's color in the firewood in her arms. For this, again, E53, 55, and 57, I'm not going to do as much blending as I did for the houses. I want to leave some dark areas in this, much like actual wood would have. So any of those dark areas from the stamped image, I'm going to keep the color darker there with E57. The squirrel is going to be a different earth tone color combination. It's going to be a little bit more reddish brown. I'm using the E13 that I used for her skin tone, but then I'm using E09 and E18 to round that out. There's enough of a reddish undertone to this that I think it works really well. He's holding a little acorn there in his paws. We're going to be positioning him standing on the tree stump and then we'll have a couple of additional acorns kind of around that tree stump to round it out. 
I think he adds a really fun, whimsical flair to this cute little Christmas outdoor scene. Her shoes, I'm going to color in with some cool grays, add some red to the bottom of those, and then we can die cut all of these images as well as another tree that I stamped and those acorns with the coordinating Home for the Holidays and Bundle Up Frame Cuts dies. I'm going to take some Picket Fence white distress paint, water it down, and then kind of splatter it all over our glimmer and liquid watercolor inked background with a small paint black paint brush, pardon me. This is going to give the illusion of a snowy background. Again, this is going to need to sit and completely air dry. It will dry pretty quickly, but you want to definitely make sure it's all the way dry before you move on to the next step. I am taking one of the nesting oval infinity dies. This is the second largest, and I'm going to die cut this from the center of my panel. This is going to create that spotlight scene so that the frame is popped up higher than the background with the buildings. So the frame, the girl, the squirrel, all of that's going to be on the foreground. We're going to have some stamping going on on the acetate window we layer behind this. And then we're going to have the buildings and the snowy backdrop there in the background of this. This is also a great way, as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you love shaker cards, you could definitely turn this into a shaker. We're going to keep both the frame and the oval. And here is my acetate stamped piece. I'm going to show you how to do this. I had originally started a different background, so I'll be showing it with this other background, but we will be using this glimmer ink. So I'm going to go ahead, I've already die cut my oval. This gives me a really good idea of where I need to stamp my sentiment. That's why I went ahead and die cut the oval first. So I'm going to use a little repositionable tape to hold these together, place these in a stamp positioner tool like the Misty. I've already trimmed down the Hero Arts acetate to four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm going to take a group of sentiments, the warm wishes from the bundle up stamp set, and then other greetings from the peace, love, and joy stamp set to work together for my card. We want to stamp warm wishes first, and then we'll stamp the smaller phrases around it. You'll notice that I use the phrase, um, wishing you to begin with. I kind of didn't realize that my large greeting has the word wish in it too and it doesn't make sense. I'm going to show you how to fix that if you get all the way to the end of your card and you realize that you have maybe messed up stamping on your acetate but you've already assembled the card. It's actually a pretty easy fix because even though we're using stays on ink it's very forgiving if you have some stays on ink cleaner which is what I'm using to clean my stamps and get all of that ink off. I don't normally put the ink cleaner directly on the stamps. However, if I'm using stays on, which I don't use very often, I will so that I can get my stamp clean. Let's position the smaller greetings now around the warm wishes. This is where having the stamp positioner comes in so handy. You can stamp multiples at the same time. You can make sure they're lined up. If they don't stamp well, you can go ahead and fix them right then and there. So you can see it says wishing you warm wishes this season, which I thought was a lot of wishes. So we're actually going to switch that to the sentiment tidings of warm wishes this season, which I think flows a lot better. The small snowflake is from the Home for the Holiday stamp set. And again, using our images that we're using as a guide and using our already die cut background, it gives you a good idea of where to put everything. So I'm just kind of stamping my snowflakes here and there. The snowflakes are only on the acetate window. We've got our water, or pardon me, our distress paint background, that splatter background for the rest of the design. I thought it would be a little too much overkill to have so many snowflakes in both the background and the foreground. I like the difference between the paint flecks and then the snow stamped snowflakes. Let's go ahead and assemble our card. I'm going to use the frame 
as a guide to where to place our inside panel. So let's replace the oval right on our side fold card base. Then let's flip over our frame and I'm using a little 1 8 inch score tape around the edges and we're going to pop our acetate panel that we've stamped right behind this. And I want to get this lined up as good as possible so that it's the grading is centered. And then I'm simply going to take some foam tape and place it around the edges to slightly pop this up. I'm only using one layer of foam tape, but if you wanted to make this a shaker, I would recommend doubling up your foam tape all the way around. It will make your shaker material shake a lot better. With one layer of foam tape, this is still going to be a very easy to mail card. I am placing all my images that are on the foreground there with my girl and the squirrel and the tree stump. And next, I'm going to go ahead and position my houses and trees, five images along that border there. And I want to keep double checking and seeing how this is going to look. And I definitely want that oval to slightly cover up the tree on the left and the house on the right. That's going to give it a much more grounded look and help with that spotlight feel. And there is what it's going to look like. Isn't that so cute? I absolutely love that the foreground of the card is the larger girl and squirrel and tree stump image. And then the background of the card features all those adorable little houses. Once we have everything where it needs to go, we can put that foam tape on the back of this panel. And I went ahead and went around all of the edges. That means um, clear across the top, the sides, everywhere. I also took a black pen and added detail to the eyes on both the girl and the squirrel here, and then took a white pen, and I'm going to go in and add some detail. You want to add any detail to both the foreground and the background before you actually adhere this panel over the background of this card. That's because we're going to be adding some liquid product to that background that we want to dry before we attach the panel. I also want to add some nice little white highlights to the trees to help it look like there's some snow on them, some little highlights to the buildings and things like that. Adds instant interest. Nouveau Crystal Drops in White Blizzard is going to go on and it does kind of look milky, but it will dry completely clear, which is going to give the windows that sparkly effect. I'm also going to add it to any of the snow areas on the houses. This should be, it's a pretty thin layer and it should be dry fairly quickly. I even added a little to the smoke coming out of the chimney. One last thing before we put our frame on, and that's the footsteps from the Home for the Holidays images stamped in soft pool so that it looks like they're leading up to the front door of the house with the smoke coming out of the chimney. Let's remove the backing paper from all of the foam tape and then pop this frame in place over the background. We're simply just going to line it up with that bottom left corner. And there is our card all finished. Now I want to share how I fixed the mistake really quick. I'm going to take a Q-tip, dab it in some stays on cleaner, and I'm gently just going to go over what I want to erase. So I'm cleaning that and I'm going to keep using a clean tip of a Q-tip so I don't smear this down into the rest of the greeting. Once I have this completely removed and dry, I can take the sentiment that I actually want to use, which is tidings of, and again, we're going to take our stamp positioner tool so that we make sure and line it up perfectly. pop that down in place, grab our stays on, and then stamp the sentiment tidings of. 
instantly we have fixed it. So acetate is super forgiving. If you stamp something and it's not in the right place, you haven't ruined your acetate, just use a little stays on cleaner to remove it. Thank you guys so much for joining me today for this spotlight scene card featuring an acetate layer. Please be sure to visit the Hero Arts blog for more information on this project. Thank you guys so much for joining me today and we'll see you next time.